Oh hi there, I'm Nico, and I grew up watching my mom play Zelda. So basically while you guys had Teletubbies, I had an eldritch horror of a moon haunting my town. So today I'll be exploring the Majora's Mask Iceberg from Reddit, but before we get into that, I have just started my channel, and if you're interested in fandom lore, conspiracies, or pop culture theories, then you are in the right place, because that's what I plan on doing. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next couple of videos. I have a lot planned and I'm really excited for this channel. In case you didn't know, an iceberg chart is basically a meme that starts at the surface level knowledge of a fandom and then starts going down and down and down until it's the most niche level content. The problem with this is at the lower tiers, it's often just stuff the original poster made up, but I will link the original post below. Also, a disclaimer, I do not know everything about Majora's Mask. I have watched my mom play it about five times. As an adult, I have played it about three times. I just started 3DS version, I'm not very far, so I might get stuff wrong. So we're gonna be starting with the first tier. This is basically the surface level knowledge. If you have played Majora's Mask and you grew up in the 90s or early 2000s, you probably know about these things. Ben Drowned is a creepypasta that personally made me want to throw away my Majora's Mask cartridge when I was a teenager because it terrified me so much. It is about a guy who thinks that he has found a haunted version of Majora's Mask or maybe every version of Majora's Mask is haunted. Who knows? Uh, and it's really terrifying, especially if you're younger, but even if you're not and you know that it's not real, it's a great little creepy night read if you're interested. This theory was popularized by the game theorists, and it is a very, very popular theory. Many people consider it canon. And so basically it is that the townspeople of Termina represent the stages of grief, which is denial, anger, bargaining, and acceptance. In the beginning of the game, the townspeople of Termina are completely in denial of their impending doom, of the the moon falling, literally everything, and I guess the idea of the theory is that by the end of it, Link helps these people through the Bomber's Notebook, which is a side quest mission that you fill out during the game, uh, to accept their death. I don't quite love this theory because, first of all, the psychological community is very, very split on if these stages of grief are actually real or if they're just a good tool to help people actualize their grief. Also, I don't think it's ever been confirmed, but hey, it's a theory. The Happy Mask Salesman, even as a child when I was watching my mom play in Ocarina of Time, he creeped me out. And within that first cycle of Majora's Mask, if you've played it, spoiler warning, yeah, you know, there is no good intentions. Like, maybe he is helping you, but he is ultimately helping himself and he caused pretty much everything bad that's happening, right? So he's not a good guy. But the thing about this theory is that it does turn into a theory because some people are speculating that possibly he is a god, he could be part of the Twilight, he could be a Sheikah. The Twilight one is kind of interesting and I will delve a little bit more into it later in the video so definitely stay tuned. The theory that Link is dead is another really popular theory within the fandom I found. It's the idea that Link is actually dead, he died in Ocarina of Time, and now Termina is purgatory, the people there are parallels, maybe they died in that with Ganon. It depends on who you're asking with the theory but the main idea is that Termina is purgatory and Link actually is dead. While this is a very fun theory uh, for some people, I've seen this happen in pretty much every single pop culture media that I've ever seen. It was all a dream, they were actually dead, uh, it was all in their head, something along those lines. I am tired of that, that's a trope. It's like, at that point I see it as a trope and for my favorite game of all time, I just do not want to ruin the story by saying that he was dead, and also it doesn't work for the timeline. But as we can all know, I don't think even Nintendo at this point knows what the timeline is, but still, definitely not my favorite theory. Lastly, I don't see this as completely surface level knowledge unless you were maybe a teenager in the 90s, which I was not, but Ura Zelda was supposed to be a four bonus dungeon Zelda game, I believe, from Ocarina of Time, and it ended up being Master Quest. And then Zelda Gaiden was another Zelda game that was in the works that ended up becoming Majora's Mask. To my knowledge, that's all there is on the topic. Now we are in tier 2. I would say that this is still pretty surface level knowledge, but it is a little bit more niche. If you are not in the fandom, maybe you won't know this, or if you've only played the game once or in passing. But it's still uh, pretty mainstream in my opinion. The English and Japanese versions of Majora's Mask have some slight differences. For instance, the save files are a little bit different, and in the Japanese version, to my knowledge, you can't save with the owl statues. 
The main difference is in the translations, however. The notable one that I've seen going around is that the Fierce Deity Mask is actually referred to as the Demon Mask Worn by Demons in the Japanese version. There are definitely some more translation differences, and I will link to the post down below if you want to check them out. I mean, yeah, the Sun Song and Sarya's Song, and also the Sun Song and Sarya's Song and the Song of Healing, they're all very similar songs. Uh, I think some people think that if you play the Song of Healing backwards, it sounds a lot like the uh, Soraya song. I mean, I'm not sure. It's They made it really simple so that kids could memorize it and didn't have to go into the load screen every time to put something, so I think it kind of makes sense that they would sound similar, right? There is a Mario mask on the Happy Mask Salesman's pack. I'm sure you may have noticed this as a kid or maybe as an adult in a replay. Some people speculate that you might be able to transform into Mario since all the masks within Majora's masks are transformative. Obviously you can't actually do this, but it would be a really cool concept. The theory that Chateau Romani is serving alcoholic milk is actually one of my favorites because it's not a theory, it's actually a reference. See, in my favorite book of all time, A Clockwork Orange, there's something called the Corova Milk Bar, where people will go and they will be able to drink illicitly drunk milk, including the main character who is at the time a child. This is one of my favorite references, and there are so many amazing classic literary and musical references within the game. If you'd ever like me to make a video on that, then please let me know because I have so many and I'm really obsessed with this part of the game. Waving away the vape smoke. <laughs> um, so the idea that there is a Star Fox symbol in the subscreen of Majora's Mask is not something I know really anything about, to be honest. Uh, apparently there is a game called Star Fox. So I promised myself I wasn't going to do this because I knew I got some things wrong. Wrong, but I just want to be clear that that was a really major breach of like intelligence saying like apparently there's a game called Star Fox. I know what Star Fox is. I never played it. I know it's pretty much a classic. Um, just forgive me for this theory, please. I'm sorry, or theory or concept or anything. Oh my god. <laughs> and some people see in the subscreen a photo from the main character. That's pretty much all I have on that theory. I'm not sure why it's even there. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But uh, pretty boring on my end, because I have no clue what that game is. And this is the third tier, or what I like to call, oh crap, I'm still a fake gamer tier. Because I definitely had to Google some of these. The Stone Temple Anti-Goddess Theory is essentially a theory that the people of Termina put away with their beliefs in the Hylian gods, and that the goddess statue in the stone temple of her licking the Triforce is a source of blasphemy, and therefore also the reason for the moon falling, Majora, and the entire city or world's demise. Uh, this is a pretty cool theory. I think that I've seen maybe Zaltik talk about this one a couple of times, that the people of Termina are like unholy or connected to the Twilight. I think that this theory does hold some breadth uh, if you really want to delve into it, and it's a really fun theory. I really don't understand why this is a theory or a conspiracy. The fact that you can crash the game, press a couple of buttons, and access a debug menu is just like... Yeah, it's a video game written in code. The devs had to have a debug menu. Every game has a debug menu, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, cool that you can access it in, in the 90s, but what I was reading about it was people being like, no, that's not real, and then seven years later, someone was like, yes, it is real, and it's, yeah, obviously, it's coded. It has to have a debug menu. The adult cafe theory is probably one of my favorite theories because Anju, which I'm, by the way, I'm referring to her as Anju because I was obsessed with her in Ocarina of Time. It was my first game. I collected those kakus like a badass only to be cucked by cafe in the next game and that is not fair. I love Anju. So you can probably understand why I accept a theory that essentially states that her husband turned from a boy back into a man when they got married in the end of the game. Yeah, this is a great theory, and I really should not have to explain to you why this either is or really, really should be canon. Yeah. So 
apparently Anju's name in Ocarina of Time was actually Kaku Lady and it's always been Anju as her general name. Sorry for making that mistake, back onto the video. The Majora's Mask and the Fused Shadow Theory actually bleeds into Twilight Princess. It states that Midna's Helm from Twilight Princess is an evolved version of Majora's Mask. I personally love this theory because I want Majora's Mask to bleed into every single bit of Zelda lore that it possibly can. Because as I said, it's my favorite game and it's not talked about enough. I honestly don't know very much about this one. It's basically that there is a demo version of the game that is on a grey cartridge instead of the original gold cartridge that I personally have. Some people say that the demo has some differences to it. I've seen on Reddit people say they paid $700 on eBay for it and don't even know if it's real. So, I mean, spend your money the way you want, but I think that's all there is to that part of the iceberg. With a hand in the toilet at the Stockpot Inn, who you hopefully help out on the third day, uh, probably does have a full body. I completely agree with that. First of all, it's based off of a Japanese toilet ghost, and I looked up the images on that. They were kind of creepy, but they all seem to have at least somewhat of a body. And let's be honest, it has A, a mouth to talk to, B, a hand to grab, and C, something it needs to wipe. And I think we all know what it needed to wipe. I'm not sure why I'm calling all of these theories or conspiracies. Some of them are just straight up facts that you might not know, like this next one. If you play Link to the Past, in Link's house there is a uh, Majora's Mask hanging from the wall. That's all there is to this one. It's just a fact. Just a fun fact. Gold NFR cartridge. Starting off great because I have a gold cartridge and I'm sure it was for resale, uh, but if I am standing on a gold mine then please let me know because my original copy is a gold little copy, little holographic thing with Link shooting the sword, all fun, I thought it was really cool. Uh, it's what made me actually want to play it even though it was a Zelda sequel because I loved Ocarina of Time so much, but um, if they're not all gold and I'm like rich please let me know. The idea that Aonuma does not like the original N64 for Zelda games is pure speculation in my opinion and to my knowledge. So I'm going to speculate right back and say, yeah, that could definitely be true. There are so many creators from YouTubers to Edgar Allan Poe that will start with one thing and it'll get really big and then that's all they can do for the rest of their career and they want to break free from that. So maybe that is the case. That happens with so many creators, most of them even. But I think it would be hollow to think that you could create something as amazing as Ocarina of Time and then Majora's Mask and not have a sense of pride and nostalgia when looking back on it. This one I can barely even read, so I mean, I'm just gonna read it to you. Maybe somebody can tell me what this means. Um, PAL VC release is a port in the GameCube version. So again, from my last one, I'm gonna have to speculate. Ports. I did some computer programming, that must mean like the things that they're plugging in for uh, the PAL VC, I, I googled that, that's a type of port. GameCube version, I'm assuming the uh, Heroes Collection. I just don't understand where this is going. I googled it, I couldn't find anything. If anyone has any idea if this actually means something, please let me know because it's- I think it's the only thing in this entire iceberg I couldn't get an answer on and it's kind of frustrating. In case you don't know, Majora's Mask was made under an incredibly tight deadline. It was made in no time at all compared to other video games and compared to Ocarina of Time itself. Ocarina of Time borrowed stuff from Super Mario, I believe. I don't know anything about Mario, so I'm gonna say Super Mario. <laughs> um, and then basically built on it and built on it, created this amazing expansive game, too expansive for the N64 actually. Um, and then when they made Majora's Mask with literally no time to spare, yeah, they reused some textures, they reused some art, they definitely had to reuse- they reused the characters, so it makes sense, but the actual, like, the story, the effect that the game has, it still affects me to this day, like 20 years after its release, so I think that that's completely okay, and I wouldn't have any critique towards that. Yeah, apparently there is going to be a IQE version of Majora's Mask, if you don't know, that was like a failed uh, collaboration console with Nintendo and like- I, I'm not, I want to say Sega, but it's probably not Sega. I, I, I have no clue. Honestly, like, that's just a conspiracy or maybe it was a failed planned project. Who knows? It might be a bit of a Mandela effect, but I personally remember my mom entering Akana Castle through the inverted stone tower when I was a kid. But the thing is, my mom was really into glitching the game. Like, she 
ruined our first Ocarina of Time playthrough by replacing our bomb shoots with a bottle, then we got to the Spirit Temple and had to start the game all over again. That was my traumatic childhood. But I do believe that this could happen. I'm not sure if it's just the 3DS version or if it's the N64 version, so if it is just the 3DS version, I'm completely not remembering things correctly at all. Uh, but please let me know down in the comments below because I'm actually pretty curious about this one. I'm about to go do the 3DS version and I'd like to know some hacks. Okay, so this is a tier where people do actually just plain start making stuff up. I am going to acknowledge everything, but I am not going to explain it if it doesn't make any sense or if it didn't come up with a Google search because I'm going to assume it's fake. This is another one I remember my mom doing, so again, let me know if I'm just crazy and I'm in a different timeline, but I remember my mom playing the song and then there's a little statue of Link and you can use it for different purposes like keeping it on a switch. I'm not sure if that's just- I think that's just part of the game though, I'm not sure. Maybe we read like a tips and tricks on game facts in like 2002, but that's what I remember her doing all the time. Apparently, in the not-for-resale demo version of Majora's Mask, Kremia and Kafai are actually related by blood, which makes Kremia's crush on Kafai a lot more disturbing than her just being friends with Anju. I have no clue why they took this out of the game. I'm not sure why glitch days are so low, low into the tier list, but if you don't know, there is a fourth day glitch. You can Google it, find out how to do it. It's really not that hard. Most people know about it. Great Bay Temple, negative emotional aura. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Lulu just lost her husband and the father of her children, possibly her actual children before Link saves them. Also, they live in a sea with still water in their domain, and in every other game to my knowledge, they have fresh water and they're near a lake. So yeah, that's a negative emotional aura. The entirety of Termina has a negative emotional aura though. Like, what? yeah, obviously, why is this? I think, I, I don't know. This one is just kind of obvious to me, uh, but there you go. That's the explanation. Spoon fed to you. Want some baby food? Okay, this one, I, I, I'm not giving it the time to memorize it because it's just so bloody stupid. Keaton spawning, Keaton foxes spawning from dancing bushes at the start of the game. Turn off console immediately. This is literally faker than the personality I constructed in high school. Like, why? I remember the Keaton Foxes at the beginning of the game with the dancing thing and I didn't shut off my console and we beat the game in like 50 hours because we sucked and it was 2003, maybe 2002, and uh, that was pretty much the end of the story. So, uh, theory disproven and stupid. Man, it's get it's getting bad. Like, the lower- I wasn't kidding. When it gets lower, it just- they're just straight up making stuff up here. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep the joy here despite how uh, stupid a lot of these things are. Apparently, a Japanese child was uh, tortured in the making of the original Majora's Mask commercial from Japan. The commercial is literal nightmare fuel. I will link it down below if you want to see it and ruin your entire year. Um, but I highly doubt they actually hurt the kid in the video. That's ridiculous, and I'm sure no children were harmed in the making of this film. Next one. August 1999 build. There is a thing called Space World and a demo for the game was played. Like, yeah. Have you ever played a demo for a game before the game was released and maybe you got it like after maybe Nintendo Direct or E3? Yeah, that still happened in the 90s, guys. Doesn't have to be at the bottom. <sighs> Majora's Mask will be real in November. Well, this was made five months ago, and November 2020, the moon did not fall on us. Second wave did hit in Canada though, so who knows, maybe this one has some breadth. The damage done to Link in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 2013 Alpha Build. I wish I could end this on a slightly more fun one, but honestly, I have no idea other than the idea that 
you know, the events of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask had a severe psychological effect on Link. And yeah, I mean, I'm no psychiatrist. I studied English and computer programming. That's what I know a little bit, not very much. Uh, but I can say as a person, that would definitely mess me up. And that makes sense. Unless that is referring to something that my Google search couldn't uh, upturn. Maybe I am a hashtag fake fan. I'm not sure. But to me, this is just probably a pretty obvious thing. And hey, maybe that's why he became a Stalfos. Maybe he was so mentally disturbed by the things that happened that he went into the Lost Woods and he never came back. He became that Stalfos and somehow came into the Twilight and then found out he had to just teach everything to the new Link. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could make this last part more interesting, but that is the last one in the list. And that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed my slow descent into madness while exploring the Majora's Mask Iceberg. If I got anything wrong, and I am pretty sure that I did, please, please roast me in the comments. My ego probably needs it. If you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe because I have a lot planned for this channel, and please do not feed the like button after midnight. We have enough gremlins online. See you in the next one.